and gentlemen, welcome to another FemFlex Friday episode. Today we are highlighting an inspirational woman who has defied all odds. Diagnosed with Stargardt disease at age 14, she has faced the challenges of visual impairment with unwavering courage and determination. Since 2013, she has been competing in the bikini division, shattering stereotypes and redefining the meaning of success in the world of fitness. She is a mother, a wife, a co-founder of Macular Adventure. Get ready to be inspired by the unstoppable and awe-inspiring Jessica Parcel. Yeah. But first, please be sure to like, subscribe to Olympia TV, and share your comments with everybody. So, and I am also here with my co-hosts, Whitney Jones, Linda Murray, Wendy Fortino, and myself, Camille Perriott. So, who is Jessica Parcel? And let's show you guys who Jessica is. My name is Jessica Parcel. I'm a fitness competitor. I grew up being very active as a child, played all the sports, basketball, volleyball, ran track. When I started growing up and about 14 years old, I started noticing that I was not seeing things the same. Specifically, I remember not being able to read the words on the blackboard in school. Yeah, there was a blackboard, it wasn't a whiteboard then. <laughs> so we started going Beautiful. from specialist mm -hmm. to specialist, trying to figure out why can't this 14-year-old girl see. It was scary, I'm, I was young, it was, I was naive. I was, well, they'll fix it, we'll figure out what it is and I'll get a new prescription or I'll get something to um, help me see. I remember actually when I went to go get diagnosed or when I went to the doctor, and they gave me the diagnosis. Um, I was really upset that I was missing a volleyball game. And uh, that just kind of seemed more important to me at the time. Um, and I guess it didn't really sink in until we were on our way home and I could tell how upset my parents were. And that's kind of when it hit me like, oh, they just told me that I have an eye disease and that, um, I'm slowly going to lose my vision. Then I was faced with, okay, you might not be able to drive. And I thought, you know, I'm, it'll be okay. We'll, we'll figure it out. You know, there's going to be a way. There's going to be something. It still kind of had sunk in that I might not be able to drive. Um, and actually, my when I was diagnosed um, and how it started to deteriorate, um, I was actually granted my license. Uh, I needed a special set of glasses and um, all sorts of different doctor's permission to actually drive, but I was granted something that most people who are born blind never get, which I feel incredibly blessed to have. And I just, I grew up being normal. In, in my eyes, I was normal. Most people couldn't see. And uh, so Jessica, so that's a little bit about her being diagnosed with this rare disease. Um, Stargardt is a genetic um, disease that affects the center of vision. So um, we, she also competed. She competed since 2013. Wow. She competed in the Arnold's Classic. So oh. we, have a, we have another video to show. Well, this is her getting ready for the Arnold's Classic. And then we have her going to be walking on the stage at the Arnold's Classic next. So she's training like normal women, yeah. is she, you know? Yeah. Does she have any sight at all right now? That's what I want to She ask. She, uh, she, could, she has peripheral vision. She has mm. peripheral vision, but she is, um, it's, it slowly deteriorates over time. So mm -hmm. she said it was a very rapid deterioration. 
uh, when she was first diagnosed at age 14, and it's continued to uh, deteriorate. She's uh, learning how to read Braille right now mm -hmm. wow. and mm -hmm. learning how to use a, a, a cane. Yeah. She's use, uh, starting to utilize, like a, I think, a seeing eye dog. Mm -hmm. um, and but just learning how, like having to retrain her whole life now. Mm -hmm. um, we have a clip of her walking on the Arnold Classic mm -hmm. stage. You know, her makeup we, looks perfect. I was mm -hmm. thinking, yeah. I don't know if she's doing her own makeup, but she sure does get that right. Mm -hmm. yeah. But, you know, we as like, we, you know, competing and training and being on stage, it's challenging enough. Yeah. Right. Let without alone these obstacles. Without these obstacles, mm -hmm. yeah. If she's, if she's able to do her makeup the way she's doing it and she can't see him like that is some next level talent. So she can just see out the peripheral. Out the, right yeah, yeah. So there's her on stage. And now okay. let's kind of go in. So now she's, this was, I believe, in 2019. Um, since then, she's had a baby. She has an eight-month uh, son. Aww. And she has also created a uh, macular adventure, which is a kind of a, an organization to help support people with Stargardt and, and blindness. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. So here's a little clip of her talking about that. Um, we'll show you guys before we take a commercial break. The disease that causes me to go blind and my sister actually has the same disease. So we decided that we didn't want to sit around and wait for somebody else to do something about it. We wanted to do our part. So we started a brand. This is like our little inventory rack here and we sell some items and the proceeds of those items, of those cells, go towards helping us fund a cure for blindness and diseases like ours, like Stargardt disease. That's amazing. Mm. So her sister was diagnosed at age 19. Wow. No Is one her else, sister older? Her or? sister's younger. No one else in the family has huh. this, but both girls are mm. blind. So we're gonna take a quick commercial wow. break, and actually we're gonna be meeting Jessica when you guys come back. Yeah. Yay. Welcome back, everybody, and we have Jessica herself on the show with us. So please, Woo! everybody, a warm welcome to Jessica Parcel. <laughs> Jessica, thank you for joining us. Hi, guys. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. So um, why don't you share a little bit about your your background, your um, your journey, your fitness journey, and it, let's let's tell us about who you are. Dive and right in. Dive right yeah. in. <laughs> Okay, um, so we'll go back to kind of, we'll start with like the vision thing. So when I was 14, I was diagnosed with Stargardt disease. And at the time it wasn't really heard of, like there was a few people that have had it. Since then, there's been a lot more awareness, which is something I'm trying to help with um, for anyone that was in my position as a 14 year old, like, hey, you're just diagnosed being told you're gonna go blind. And I'm like, oh man, I wish I could see somebody that's living with this condition. So now there's a lot more with like the age of social media, connecting with people around the world, which has been really cool. But um, in school, I was always a three, uh, three season athlete. Um, so this was volleyball season and I had to go miss, it didn't really hit me. I was just really more upset that I was missing my volleyball game. Um, so <laughs> I could tell like later I was just like, okay, this is something that's going to happen, but it wasn't something that I was super, maybe I was naive and just kind of like didn't devastate me right away by any means. I was just kept living my life and kept going. Um, and I really enjoyed sports. And then I think like a lot of people that get into competing, you get out of high school, college, you're just like, okay, I want something like athletic, something fun to do, something competitive. And I was introduced to the competition world in 2013. And I did my first uh, bodybuilding bikini division competition, which was so fun. Mm. And that for me was just... I don't know, the biggest confidence boost ever, um, more because I realized 
okay, wow. Like if I set like a goal and I have a plan and every single day I'm consistent and I work at something, I can achieve a goal and a dream. So I feel like it taught me a lot about myself and that I was capable of doing things regardless of if I had to do things a little bit differently, if my journey looked a little different than other people's um, bodybuilding, it was just such an empowering sport for me. So I just really feel like that kind of saved me mentally and, you know, even physically, like after my college years of like gaining some weight and not being as active as I was in high school. Mm. So in so many ways, that was such a like saving thing for me. Um, and now I, I haven't competed since 2019, since before uh, pandemic and then pandemic hit. Um, and we, in 2022, just welcomed our first baby. So Yay. I'm in my motherhood era, which I'm loving. <laughs> it's amazing. Wow. But now I'm starting to get that itch again, and I would love to hit the stage. So no future date or time, but it's something that I'm looking at. Um, just I want to hit the stage again. It's yeah. so much fun, and it's something I love. I have a question for you. So I was watching a lot of your videos, and you talked about you're, you're such a positive uh, positive woman and to overcome what you have been you're, you've been going through it takes a lot of courage but I, I've, I saw this one piece of you talking about your parents and how you grew up tell us a little bit about the way they treated you when you were younger because that had a big impact on who you are and where you, how, how you've gotten here yeah. So my parents, I credit them a lot for just a lot of that confidence that I had at a young age. I remember them teaching me to advocate for myself when I would go into a classroom. They would always go and, you know, talk to my teachers about what my situation was. But um, a lot of times people don't really understand because I feel like I present as somebody who can see um, well. So you don't really know all the time right away. So even though they might have been made aware, um, there was times where I'd be called to be like, hey, read the board, you know, things like that. And um, so my mom and dad really pushed me to advocate for myself, um, whether that was in the classroom or whether that was like on my sports teams. And I have three sisters. Um, one of them does have the same disease as I do, but she wasn't diagnosed until she was um, 19. So she was already out of the house. So growing up, I was the only one with it. And they didn't treat me any different than my other sisters. They didn't make me feel like I wasn't capable or, oh, you know, Jessica might need extra help. They let me do things. They let me kind of um, explore and just find things in my own way. And they were very supportive emotionally, but they would also not let me sit in a pity party too long. Mm -hmm. If that was something <laughs> that yeah. I wanted to do yeah. at the moment, they'd be like, you, there's nothing stopping you. You're so capable. You can do it. So I think that perspective and that mentality has really helped me a lot too. Well, mm. you, you do present as somebody yeah. who can see and it, and watching you on stage, I mean, you, you look like you have no issue seeing. So can you just explain a little bit more about <laughs> what, what limitations you, you have with your vision? Like how do you see what, what are the, you know, obstacles with what you can and can't see? Yeah, it, kind of a tough thing to describe but the best way is it affects the central vision so technically i do have big blind spots in the center of my vision and your central vision is really um responsible for your definition and focus um but the brain is really cool and in those areas where there's actually blind spots it's like my brain's trying to fill in with the information that the eyes are taking in around oh. so i don't see black spots i almost just see blur and it's not until somebody's in that blind spot or something's in that blind spot that i'm like oh i'm not seeing that and will it deteriorate then each a good year i'm having a conversation with somebody from far away Right. Yeah, it does. It slowly deteriorates, but it only affects the central vision. So I will never, I'll always have peripheral vision. So I will always have some sort of um, light perception. I can see things, just not in great detail. So especially on stage, um, I'm, uh, I always talk to the expediters and they're always amazing. I'm like, hey, I'm blind. If I'm out there and you're trying to move me somewhere, kind of like guide me and, and it's been pretty, I haven't had any big mishaps. And then of course, you know, trying to look at the judges and smile, I'm just looking in the general direction of where they are, but I could be looking at the row behind them. I'm really not, not sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was the next question I was gonna ask and advocating for yourself and, and going into a competition, like how many people do you make aware of it? So you definitely tell the expediters. Yeah. I'm sure they possibly will tell the 
tell the judges, but I'm sure you're like, okay, I want to not be given any true right. special attention or yes. treated differently. Can you tell us about, about your uh, approach? So it depends. Like each show has been kind of different. Um, big shows, you know, there's just so many moving parts. So I'll kind of go and talk to people individually. Um, the people like the expediter that's right there. I kind of tell the girls around me, you know, just kind of mm -hmm. um, communicate with people that way. But I'll also kind of send an email. My husband has been one of my biggest helps. But as you know, like there's kind of sections where sometimes it's like, okay, all females go here. And so like, I'm just kind of going into this area where I'm like, oh man, I have no idea where I'm going. Mm -hmm. I have, have had to ask a few times, like, hey, can somebody escort me? Can you show me where I'm going? Or, you know, where should I get glued in? Or, you know, where are we lining up? Things like that. Um, I definitely try to listen a lot. And, um, you know, you're always hearing like, mm -hmm. this class is up next. So I'm always trying to pay like really close attention and just kind of stick around. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, sometimes I'll email and, and they've been so great and receptive to being like, hey, whatever help you need, whatever, you know, if you need somebody to come back, if you need somebody designated to kind of be with you at that time. Um, so it's always been really wonderful. And I never expect people to know about my condition. So sometimes I am kind of met with like, hey, why is this person coming back with you? But I just explain and everyone's been so, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, so good about it. Yeah, I would say you probably the absolute best competitor because one of the things we were just talking about competition and being a promoter and expediting yeah. and being an MC a lot of times the athletes they don't listen yeah. they don't use their ears <laughs> and I have to I'm serious I have to we had to tell the like trophy presenters like be prepared. You're not just up here passing out trophies. Be prepared for them not listening. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's like, yeah. it's awesome. I think that's an advantage that yeah. that really that you have. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, we we know. I mean, a, a lot of people face um, adversity. They there's positive and there's negatives. You know what I mean? I don't I don't want to like focus on ne negatives because you're such a positive person. Yeah. But I'm sure you've you've had to cross some obstacles in your path up to now, what would you say have been some of your biggest obstacles? Like maybe being met with some resistance or anyone who's been negative, like I'm, you're nodding your head, I'm sure. I mean, yep. I'm sure it's not all positive, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's, there's definitely challenges. I think the biggest thing for me is uh, my loss of independence when it came to driving. Um, when I was first diagnosed, I still had the visual acuity to drive, yeah. um, which sounds kind of like, okay, a blind girl's driving, but there are certain ways. It's so hard to describe, but, um, when I was just, you know, at the very beginning of it, like I could still drive and get myself to the gym and I, I love that. And now, you know, it, I'm coordinating schedules with my husband. I'm, you know, getting rides from friends, my sister's husband, things like that. So just kind of like some days you don't want to go to the gym and you're just like, man, but I remember back in the day, I'm like, if I just get in the car and I drive there, I'll start my workout and mm. I'll do it. But I have, I feel like I have to have a little extra like oomph to like mm, convince yeah. myself to coordinate and make sure I do get there. Mm -hmm. um, and then on, on the, the other side, as far as, I, I care about people. I care about like how I make people feel. So in a lot of situations, I get worried about, oh my gosh, somebody's going to think I'm rude because they could think I'm staring at them. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of situations where somebody could, I just had, you know, I'll tell people at the gym, like I can have a great conversation with somebody. And then the next day they wave and smile at me. And I look, I could look at them mm -hmm. and they're like, oh, what's wrong? We got a I think um, just kind of like the misunderstanding of like not understanding the visual impairment or even if I do try to explain it, um, a lot of people will be like, yeah, you know, I wear glasses and contacts too, you know, so they maybe don't, ex you they know, don't understand it. at the level of what I'm trying to say or right. um, that blindness is a spectrum. So most people that are considered blind, legally blind to like completely fully um, no light perception. Um, there's a lot of people that do have light perception or can see some things. So there's a lot of people that say, oh, you're not blind because their belief of what blind should look like or mm -hmm. how people should act with blindness mm -hmm. right. is like just something they're not familiar with. Mm. That's too bad. That would that would be my biggest, that would be something that would be really hard for me is I'm like you, I feel like, because I'd be worried that people would misinterpret 
you know, maybe I'm looking at them, you know, I don't even know I'm looking at them, or maybe they are looking at me and they, they don't, I would be so stressed out, like what you just said, that people are just yeah. misunderstanding me, you know? Mm-hmm. That's oh yeah. Especially like <laughs> I'll be doing cardio in the gym and our cardio equipment's in the back. Yeah. So it's like the whole gym. So I'm like, okay, I have to find a place to zone out. That's not in a direction. <laughs> so if I can prop myself up in front of a TV and look in that direction, I'm like, okay, I can zone out safely here. Cause I, I have had people like that were working out with my husband. Be like, why is your wife staring at me? And he's like, dude, she's not staring at you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she's just you know, looking in a direction. So you there's wish, just a buddy. lot of that kind of stuff. You and wish, buddy. I think, You're you know, gorgeous. in the gym, there's a lot of the. <laughs> <laughs> now, yeah, with, so. Is this a disease where it's typically diagnosed, say, in your teenage to later youth years? So, and I'm assuming it's hereditary since you both, you and your sister. And then with your new child, is there a chance it's passed on? Yes, yeah, so it is genetic. Um, It is both parents have to be a carrier of the gene because you send two copies um, from each parent. So my husband was, um, once we found out we were pregnant, he did get a test to see if he carried the negative copy of, I think it's called the ABCA4 gene. And he has two working copies of it. So he passed on a working copy and I automatically have two copies that don't work so I passed on one that was affected so my son is a carrier of the disease but he'll never develop it because he has the one working copy Mm. wow Wow. interesting Mm. and then does your sister have children it will be the same for her if her husband carries the gene Mm -hmm. then their children will have I believe a one in four chance or I don't know I don't remember the exact statistics but I know that like if her husband carries a copy of the negative gene, then um, then there's a chance. But if he has two working copies of that gene, then it will be the same thing. So her children will, um, if he doesn't have any of that, uh, yeah. her children will never present with the disease. Mm. Now, your parents, neither of them have the disease, but they're obviously both carriers, right? Interesting. Right, wow. yeah. And so it, it, when I was diagnosed, they're like, wow, this is so rare. You know, it's wild for two people with this copy to me and have children. And now it's kind of come out that I think there's just a lot more awareness and there are more people that are having it. So it is something to know, you know, for my children's children and, and things like that, that there are, that is, it is in the family. Um, and just to know, because if you can catch it earlier, there are some treatments that can help um, slow the progression. Um, so it is something to be aware of if you just can't one day like me get your or, or glasses prescription up to 2020. Wow. Interesting. And Jessica, you had so you had mentioned that you you are no longer able to drive. What other things are you having to adjust in your lifestyle um, as your condition has I guess progressed or yeah. what other what other, what other changes are you experiencing right now? Um, I just I feel like there's always something new with slipperhood. Um, you know, a lot of people can just kind of glance over and be like, okay, my baby's you know making some noise, but they're safe. But I I kind of have that like worry to be like close to him at all times and you know be checking on him and um, you know I really utilize technology. Technology is amazing. Um, I have. Uh, my husband is super supportive with everything I have going on. Um, some other challenges, I would say transportation is kind of a big thing. Um, and then just technology has taken over so much from the beginning. One new avenues that kind of make things, um, I would I, maybe a little bit more common or more normal. Like if I'm walking around with a headphone in, people aren't really looking at me like strangely so there's a lot of times where I'm using assistive technology and people don't even really know. Um, mm-hmm. So I feel like a lot of the challenges that I would have had kind of back when I was first diagnosed have really been remedied by technology. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I would just say like the independence, finding my way around in new areas, meeting new people. There's a lot of things. I'm not a shy person. I love to connect with a lot of people and meet up with people. It's just, I don't really have it. It's not as easy for me to do those things. So I feel like that's kind of my biggest hang up is, is kind of like that social aspect, the transportation aspect. But as far as work, you know, all of that stuff, technology has really taken over. And um, 
I just do things a little differently, but it just yeah. feels pretty normal. I've got to ask, I saw a clip of you learning how to read Braille mm -hmm. um, recently. How hard is that to learn how to read Braille? Like that's, that that's sounds yeah, crazy that's, yeah. to think about. It's, it's pretty wild. I mean, it's, I have so much respect for people that can read it fluently and quickly. Um, it depends on the integrity of like the, the printing that you're feeling. Cause sometimes if one dot wasn't poked as well, you know, and it's a little lower, it changes what the letter would be. Hmm. So some of it's like, okay, I can tell that this is an A and this is, you know, and I'm just kind of context clues. Okay. This makes sense in this sentence. Um, still very slow at it. Um, I was actually surprised, um, that I did kind of pick it up quickly. Uh, it's definitely one of those skills that if you don't use, you're going to lose it. So yeah. it, it's got to be practiced daily. Um, but yeah, I, I'm not even close to being quick at it, but as far as the it alphabet goes, it kind of, it is mind blowing. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah. so now you are, now you have also created a, a, a business with your yeah. sister. We, we, we saw a quick clip of that. Um, macro adventure. Is that right? It's called, it's macular adventure. Ma I'm sorry. Macular it, adventure. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so it, it's a newer, um, company, but the whole purpose was we wanted to raise money for the blind community. Our first donation was able to go to the foundation fighting blindness. Um, and so it'll be different things, just whatever it can be, whether it's finding cures for diseases like ours, or maybe even just getting assist assistive technology into the hands of people that make their lives better. That's the whole goal behind it. You know, that's really the driving force. It's something we really love doing. Um, so it's been, we call it our passion project. Yeah. Where can people find information or support you? Do you guys have a website? Yeah, it is called macularadventure.com. Perfect. And macular is like our disease, macular degeneration, but we just took that name and rebranded it and tried to make it more um, recognizable and something um, that we could make a difference with. It's really, it's a really cute shop too. Mm -hmm. You guys have some apparel, but you guys really focus on sunglasses because it's, you were saying wow. it's very important to you and your community. Yeah. So sunglasses are kind of like the sunscreen for your eyes. And, you know, regardless of what you have, it's really an important thing to protect your eyes. And a lot of people don't necessarily think about it until, you know, maybe you're aging and you're like, wow, my vision's kind of going a little in. Natural process, but I do think having some sunglasses that have some UV protection um, can really help and protect eyes and for us it's really essential because we have a lot of um sensitivity to light so it's fun because it's both a fashion accessory but it's also something that can be very beneficial health-wise mm. i'm going to show this to my husband because he never wore sunglasses i'm always trying to get on his butt about it <laughs> <laughs> but but speaking of husbands um we know you have an amazing one and i hear that you met him in junior high can you tell us a little bit about your connection with him and your journey together Oh yes, yeah. he is my best friend. We we met. I was in eighth grade, and he was well. We met younger than that, but he officially asked me to be his girlfriend when Aww. I was in eighth grade, and we just did life together. We went through um, high school, and after high school, he joined the Air Force, um, and so we ended up getting married. But the cool thing is, is that he was actually around when I was diagnosed. So mm -hmm. he's been there through the whole process. Ah, that's and he knew me chose. prior to the disease and then through it. And actually when we're out in public and somebody comes up and says, hey, Jessica, he'll kind of whisper in my ear and he'll be like, oh, that's so-and-so, you know, so it, it kind of <laughs> takes some of that anxiety away so I can just Aww. be myself and, you know, be like, oh, hi, and be genuine. So I, I don't have that like filter of like, oh man, who is this? You know, yeah. and that fear of like, I'm gonna not recognize you. So does he help you with your posing when you were going yeah. through the posing yeah. every morning? Because I know we're obsessed with that when your body's changing. Oh, does yeah. he like help you with your angles and all of that? Yeah, yes, he does. And he's, he's so, he's so sweet. He, he helps me with everything. I don't know if he'd be embarrassed, but he'll help me um, touch up my hair. I'll be like, Hey, is my makeup blended? And you know, he's oh. so sweet. Like he'll come up so with a makeup. So is he doing your makeup? Like, oh. Who's doing your makeup? Cause he your makeup looks awesome. 
Um, I got it done for this. Aww. I did go to somebody to get it done perfect. for this. But great. I'm like, well, she's talented. Yeah. <laughs> she can do her makeup like that. Jeez. <laughs> not not this good. I mean, I, I can get some things done. I do like having some like permanent makeup things done, like um, whether it's uh, or semi-permanent, like having eyelash extensions, things that and that like added thing off of my plate that I don't have to focus on. So I kind of like some of those things that are out now, but yeah, my husband, he in the past has been like, Hey, come here and he'll fix the curl for me. Or, you know, he's bikini posing and like, Oh, you've got to do this or that. And I'm like, Hey, I rely on you a lot. So I'm always listening for his voice out in the audience. And he's mm. been at every show, and he's been so supportive. So I genuinely couldn't have done it without him. Mm. Yeah, Aww. you guys, ha you guys have to follow Jessica's social media and YouTube. You have an incredible YouTube channel, and you do. I, I can tell you do a lot of put a lot of energy into curating your videos. But your husband's in a lot of them, and it's you guys have a really sweet relationship. Aww. Thank you. It. Yeah, but <laughs> sadly, Jessica, we have to um, we have to leave. But I really appreciate you coming on and sharing your your story with us and our audience. Um, you're a true inspiration, yes. and we are just very grateful to have people like you in this world. And we are definitely going to share all your information with our followers in the, the description below to find Jessica and her company, and also to follow her journey. But Jessica, we really appreciate you coming on with us today. You're amazing. You're amazing. Yes. absolutely amazing. Yeah, and we hope to see you on stage soon. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah, we will. <laughs> yes, thank you guys so much. I'm so honored. I really appreciate it. Thank you for taking the time to talk to me and hearing my story. I really appreciate it. Oh, keep inspiring, yeah. Yeah, girl. Keep doing, keep it. doing, keep doing, doing it. it. Yes. Thanks, guys. All right, we're gonna do one quick commercial break, and we'll be right back. Bye, Jessica. And we are back. So, what do you She's guys think? Awesome. Right? She was yes. awesome. Oh, man. Yeah. She's yeah. amazing. Yeah. I was like, I had questions in regards to like her just being on stage and like posing yeah. and feeling. Yeah. Like, because everything she's she does it's like feeling yeah you know, the, the, when you're on so when you're on stage as a competitor i really use my peripheral vision to yeah. see where okay, you're yes. like, you I'm, I'm almost to, yeah. looking through right. my peripheral vision because yeah. you're wanting mm -hmm. to see what your other right. people yep. next to you are right. doing you're right so yeah that's a real benefit like in i mean just in operating that way. yeah yeah, yeah. you know yeah. what makes me sad is like if she can't see details seeing her baby like i know I know, Gosh, you there's know? Some, definitely some things she's overcoming and staying so positive yeah. for all that. I yeah. Know. Well, and even like if it is something that's passed on to her kids or niece and nephew from her, her sister, mm -hmm. they've obviously proven that it's not going to stop them. Yeah. Like, that's pretty badass. Let's no excuses, people. Yeah. Um, but she, just she was talking person. about her shop. I wanted to see what kind of stuff she has on her. Are shop. we gonna go shopping? Let's yes, go. Let's, let's do, do a little it. shopping because there is. She has some really cute stuff. Cute girls, girls. Sister girls. girls, and we shop. Oh, those and are unique. What are we gonna? Unique? What are you gonna do? Oh, look Shapes at the little. Right there. Yeah, the like. It's, it's like, like your winged out eyeliner. Yeah, those are really yeah, cute. Yeah, yeah, they're wings. And they got aviators. I love my aviators. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we you love guys, your shop, Jessica. Yeah, the shop is adorable. Her and her sister created this. The proceeds go to help find a cure for blindness in Stargardt. So if you guys are shopping, yeah. go check out Jessica's store. Mm -hmm. It's go awesome. It mm -hmm. But um, you guys, thank you so much for tuning in today. And we hope to bring more stories like this, highlighting athletes with incredible stories to you guys because they are inspirational and they're amazing and they need to be recognized. So be sure to yeah. like, subscribe, comment below, tell us what you think, and follow Jessica's story. She's an awesome woman to follow. Yeah. So until next time. Femflex Friday, we're out! Bye! Bye.